Gonzo. Welcome to JLo's So Hot, So Tasty Kitchen, where I enjoy teaching you recipes with love. Oxtail soup? Now that sounds delicious, but have you tried the Chamorro recipe? Well, I want to teach you step by step how I prepare my version of Chamorro oxtail soup. Let me show you what ingredients I will need to make that delicious Chamorro recipe. The ingredients that we need to prepare Chamorro oxtail soup includes garlic powder, fresh garlic, fresh ginger, onions, salt and pepper, olive oil, less sodium soy sauce, Cancun, coconut milk, taro root, winter melon or kumdok, water, and oxtail. Okay, first thing that we need to do is we are going to sear our oxtail. I have my pan and my heat here on high. We are going to add our oxtail to our pan. Now this oxtail I have here is about two and a half pounds. Okay, so we're gonna add now one tablespoon of olive oil to our pan. the oxtail to brown on all sides. And then we are going to add one teaspoon of salt. And I am using kosher salt. And then we are going to add one teaspoon of black pepper as well. Now we just want to be sure to brown our all sides of our oxtail. This is the best way to start off your oxtail is by searing it so it gives it that color and adding that extra extra flavors to the to the meat. All right, so our oxtail has been browned and next step we're going to do is we are going to add our chopped up garlic. Now this is about four cloves. Add that to our pan. Then we're going to add our fresh ginger which is about two tablespoons. And then we are going to add our chopped up onions, which is about one medium. All right, so we're gonna give that a stir. Now this is so that you can add the garlic, ginger, onions to the, um, and give it its flavor before we add it to our stock pot. Now we're just going to allow this to cook for just about two minutes.
All right, so the next step that we're gonna do is we are going to add one tablespoon of less sodium soy sauce to give it a little bit more color to the oxtail and then also to add a little salt flavor to it as well. Now let's go ahead and give this a stir. Now we're just gonna allow this to cook for another two minutes and then we will start the process of making our soup. So it's gonna allow this to brown just a little bit longer. Okay, so it's been two minutes and we've allowed it to brown a little bit more. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to transfer this to my stock pot. Now I'm going to add this to my burner. It is still on high heat. And I'm going to add eight cups of water to this. Okay, so we are going to cover this and allow it to come to a boil and we will check on this. Now it's gonna take about an hour to boil this to get it really soft and tender, but your water may be uh, dissolved, will evaporate so you can add more water to your pot as it's boiling. So we will check back in about an hour. All right, while our oxtails are boiling, let's work on our next ingredient. I have here half of a whole of winter melon, or in Guam, you call it kundot. Now I saw this at our local Asian store here and I said, wow, it looks really similar to our vegetable that we use and enjoy in our soup. So I gave it a try and sure enough, it tastes just like it, texture wise and everything. So let's go ahead and cut up this and clean it up. So we're just gonna cut off the end. And we are going to just cut away the inner part of this. I've tried scraping it out, but it just seems as if it's too thick for me to scrape it out. So cutting away of it is um, better. going to skin the outer which is a, a hard green skin in the outside so we're just going to skin it away really hard texture if you use your potato pillar it won't it won't skin it so it's best just to cut it out into medium bite size or large bite size perhaps. So you just want to cut it out down the middle. And then we want to just cut them into large size. Now winter melon is a large fruit that grows in a vine. It's kind of similar to pumpkin. And as
as it's growing, there's a flower that blossoms and then becomes, it matures and it becomes a fruit. But when you're using it in the kitchen for cooking, it is called a vegetable. And they have this in all parts of the world. Um, I've seen that India has this, uh, Sri Lanka, Nepal, in the Philippines as well. So they're called different in different places that have it. So in Guam, we call it kundot. The English term is winter melon. And then it's also called a wax guard or an ash guard. So there's different names to it. And they have lots of health benefits when consuming this. Types of health benefits that they have is it helps with weight loss. It augments heart function, so it helps with the, the heart conditions. And then also detoxifies your kidneys and it enhances your digestive system. So I just want to do that, just cut away the inner part of this. And also it strengthens your respiratory. So this is a really good um, type of fruit, vegetable that you can use. set this aside all right let's see how our oxtails is coming along it's been about half an hour that has been boiling now as you can see our water has lessened in here so we're gonna add another eight cups to our pot and we're gonna allow this to come to a boil then we are going to add one tablespoon of salt. And we are going to add one teaspoon of black pepper. Let's go ahead and give this a stir. And our heat is still on high, so we are going to allow this to boil for the remaining 30 minutes that we have. And then we will check back on this. All right, so the next ingredient that we will be preparing is our taro root. I have here a vacuum packed taro that has been skinned. I found this at my local Asian store. Now taro is a root, um, it's a vegetable. It has a mild, nutty taste, starchy texture, and nutritious benefits that you can have when you're consuming this. Now we are going to use a whole, which is one, this one. Now all we want to do is cut it down the middle. Really, really tough. There you have it. And then we are just going to cut it in half. And then again, cut it along the middle. And then just cut it. Taro is rich in nutrients that can provide important health benefits such as improved digestive system. It also helps with your blood sugar management and 
and helps with the heart. has been boiling. Let's go ahead and check how our meat is. Yeah, so it's still needing a little bit more uh, boiling. So we are going to add another 30 more minutes to boil this. And before we do that, I'm gonna add another four cups of water. So in total, that was 20 cups. And then I'm going to add garlic powder, which is about one tablespoon. And then I'm going to add another teaspoon of salt. Right, let's give this a stir. And we are going to allow this to boil again for 30 minutes. So we will be back. All right, let's see how our oxtail is coming along. So I boiled this an additional 30 minutes on top of the hour and a half. So in total, I boiled about two hours for the meat. Let's see how our meat is. Looks like it's coming off the bone, as you can see. Really soft and tender. All right, so let's add our next ingredient to the, pe to the pot. We are going to add our taro. And we are going to add our winter melon or kundot. Now we're going to allow this to boil again and then we will check on this. All right, let's see how our taro and our kundut is coming along. So it has poked through, it is cooked. Let's put, place that back in. And let's grab a winter melon or kundot. And that as well has poked through. All right, so our next ingredient we're gonna add to the pot is our kankum. And this is a, a bunch of kankum and we're just gonna add it to our pot. So we're going to allow this to cook. For about five minutes. And then we will add our last ingredient to the pot. Okay, so we've allowed our Cancun to cook up in our oxtail soup. And look at that, all that vegetables up in there. Our meat that looks like it's falling off the bone. So our last ingredient we are going to add is our coconut milk. Now I've lowered my heat to low and we are going to add the coconut milk to the soup. Now normally in a Chamorro uh, oxtail soup recipe, they use pumpkin tips, but I can't find pumpkin tips out here, so I chose to use kankum. Mmm, smells so good. All right, so we're gonna give this a stir, 
and then we are going to allow it to come to a gentle simmer for about two minutes and we'll check back on it. Okay, so it's been about two minutes that we've allowed it to come to a simmer. Let's turn off our heat. All right, now you can enjoy this over rice. And also you can enjoy this with finna Denny. I will share that link in my description below. Go and check out my two finna Denny sauces, one with vinegar and the other with lemon.